Wayne uh, markets under pressure today. We're down one and a half percent. Yeah. Dismal that way to to end off the yeah. week. But look, understand. I mean, today the fall might have been triggered by the Chinese economic data that came out uh, last night. But understand, this has been happening for the whole month so far, where the primary concern is the world's economy seems to be going through the so-called slow patch, yeah. quiet patch. The question is, is this truly just a temporary slowdown, or is there something fundamentally wrong in the U.S. economy that can't be fixed? Because we know things are wrong there. <laughs> You're just wondering, can it so be would fixed you by cheap money? That? Do you think there's I something fundamentally think wrong with the U.S. Look, economy? What's fundamentally wrong there is people aren't spending because they don't feel rich because the price of their house has fallen and they're losing their jobs or there's no new jobs being created. I mean, that's yeah. the actual problem. That's not going to change in a hurry. The U.S. housing market's not going to pick up dramatically in a hurry and unfortunately the unemployment side's not going to look better in a hurry as well. But I don't think there's something fundamentally wrong. I don't think we're on the brink of a double depression or we're on the brink of another world economic collapse. I just don't think we are there. They're just, there's just too much liquidity around for that to reoccur. Is it good for equity markets? The answer is unfortunately no. But understand, particularly the U.S. market, the U.S. market is now approaching its low for the year. And we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there yeah. quite rapidly. The question will be, let's just say in our share market, when it hits 30,000, because, you know, as, as a... As we've spoken about, as Sally spoke about quite a bit, South Africa's doing okay, actually. I mean, there's nothing dramatic to worry about here. So when our market hits 30,000, the question will be, do we buy some more shares at that level, yes or no? Because then we've seen 10% weakness in the market. So would you be buying I think we probably way. would. You know, if everything stays the way it is today, in other words, there's no more material bad news. You know, I, I think the U.S. will still grow. It'll grow at a lower pace. But by and large, shares falling 10% might represent a reasonable buying opportunity. Look, luckily enough, we underweight equity at the moment. So, you know, surprisingly enough, a falling market actually suits our investment portfolios. But if it carries on falling, For we might want to take it. How long have you been underweight equities? I know, month, about a month now, yeah. And what, so what, made you, what prompted you to go Pure underweight? valuation. The, va the market just didn't look cheap at that level. Um, Lodman down almost 5% today. Uh, Able shedding just over 4%. So we're seeing some big losses Look, everything's down today. I mean, there's just red right over the board. So I wouldn't worry too much about any one particular share going down. What I found interesting, platinum shares were down quite yeah. heavily. Gold shares weren't too bad. I mean, they weren't down as much as the rest of the market. Obviously, Anglos and Billiton are down mm. because they, you know, they make up such a big component of the share market. But construction shares were actually up last time I looked. The banks aren't doing too badly, but Richmond and uh, Richmond and SA Breweries were coming under also quite a bit of pressure there, despite but the weaker end. And it's a tale of two worlds because we saw the gold miners coming under significant pressure Ooh, earlier in the pounded week, earlier week, and yeah. now perhaps not doing as badly. I mean, yeah. we know how many look, edged up slightly. You know, today. as I said earlier, on, forget what's happening today. This has been happening for a while now. This worry in the share market about the so-called soft spot in the economy and this all started when those u.s employment data numbers came out mm. at 53 000. so do you think this could prompt um ben bernanke to rethink uh, his stance on quantitative easing he might rethink it but i don't think he's going to do anything about it because one thing we know for sure there's no shortage of liquidity in the market understand what what qe1 and qe2 has done it's rescued the banking system it rescued the government now, they rescued already. They don't have to be rescued again. Banks are okay. It didn't put money in the consumer's pocket. So just not having a QE3 doesn't take money out of consumer's mm. pockets. They're just not spending because the price of the house, which is the one objective that QE1 and 2 did not meet, to stabilize and improve the housing market. So maybe some other form comes to try and get the housing market. So maybe some tax incentives on buying houses like they've done before, I don't know. But I think an official QE3 won't happen, but there'll probably be some sort of another program, some additional uh, injection, but they're going to try and focus on the consumer yeah. and the housing market. So thank you very much for joining us sure. today. Much appreciated. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Wayne McCurry from RMB Asset Management.